Here we are, another week in a study in 1 Corinthians. This is week nine. Week nine. We've been in this study for nine weeks already, studying what Paul was saying to the to the Corinthians, to the Corinthian church. And boy, this is rich. It's it's I mean getting really strong in what God is saying to his people. See, we want we what I want in this this ministry, what this ministry wants is to see the people of God strengthened, lifted up. And, and guided and directed to a place that they can come to realize and understand that, that God is there for them, that his word is there for them. He's there to strengthen them and lift them up and guide them and direct them through a life that, Lord, they can look back over their life and say, I have done something that ha- that has furthered God's kingdom, that has seen God glorified all over the planet. Oh, I thank God for the privilege that he gives me to do that every day of my life. I'm talking about every day of my life. And that's what this study's all about. That's what this this in him study started in June the 21st of 2021. That's where all this started at. We went through the entire book of Romans. And now we're in 1 Corinthians teaching people who they are in Christ Jesus. The benefits of that. The strength that comes in that. So I, this this is the time that I always use to take and thank God for the partners of this ministry. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, sowing into God's kingdom through this ministry, helping us give this word away, give this encouragement away to the world that we live in so the world's eyes can be opened to who they are in Christ Jesus or who they can be if they're not born again. Salvation's an important, important part of this ministry, and we want to see the lost of this world born into God's family through faith in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. And then I, we want them to come to the knowledge and understanding of what God has said about them in, the, in His Word, where they can stand strong and not allow religion to push them away, to, to, to just push them down and push them away from God because that's what shame and condemnation of the world and religion does for people. It pushes them away. I know, I know, I ran, I ran from, from typical religion. I ran from church because I didn't know who I was. I, I had never been told that I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. But I want to tell you today, God is for you. He's for you, and he wants more than anything to see you born into his family if you're not born again. So in saying that, I want you to don't forget to download this this phone app. Download this phone app and get a hold of what God is saying to you, for you, and about you in his word. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to come to the realization of God's love and his mercy and his grace and his goodness. He wanted their eyes open to those truths. He wanted their eyes open to, to, to them to know or for them to know and understand God's love for them. And that is my desire for every person that walks the face of this planet, that they come to realize and know how much God loves them and cares for them. I'm, I am convinced that this will change the world that we live in. I'm convinced that people's lives will be changed forever when they come to realize just how much God loves them and cares for them. So today we're going to do Paul's prayers in Ephesians. Ephesians 1.15, Paul said, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. 
God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he opens my eyes to that love, that mercy, that grace, and that goodness more and more every day. And he does it through his word. That's what I I instill in everyone that listens to this podcast, that God's word will change the way you look at life. It'll change the way you look at yourself, and most of all, it'll change the way you look at Him. Glory to God. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your Word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today, and I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Okay, we're going to go into uh, 1 Corinthians 3.18. It says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Now, I want want to go to the, uh, the New Living and the Amplified Classic version of these uh, scriptures and uh, see if I can't get some some more light on those two uh, translations or th- those two verses or that verse rather. The New Living Translation of 1 Corinthians 3.18 says, Stop deceiving yourselves. If you think you're wise by this world's standard, you need to become a fool to be truly wise. Now, this is talking about uh, the, lo- looking at the way the world looks at godly things. The world looks at godly things as they are foolish. But I assure you, they, that's the wisdom of God, because the wisdom of God is foolishness to men. Listen to what the Amplified Classic says for John, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.18. It says, Let no person deceive himself. If anyone among you supposed supposes that he is wise in this age. Let him become a fool. Let him discard his worldly discernment and recognize himself as dull, stupid, and foolish without true learning and scholarship that he may become really wise. Now, this says to go to Isaiah 521, and I don't know, that's, this is the Amplified Classics um, a reference of this verse. So I'm going to go to it. I don't know what it says. have no idea, but it, it's a it's a reference in here, and I'm going to go and, and look it up. Isaiah 5 and 21. It says, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Uh, and really, you know what, what he's talking about, what I, Isaiah was talking about. Look, worldly wisdom, worldly wisdom, wisdom will mess you up. You get you get you get inflated in what this what you know about this world. I know a lot of things about a lot of. Uh, I have a lot of. I say this a lot. I've got a lot of useless information uh, bound up in my head. Just over the years, you just pick things up and and stuff that you're interested in, like you know animals and 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 certain things that I've been interested in over my life. I've just retained them. But I'm gonna tell you something. The, the worldly wisdom 
will not will not put you in a place that that you can be strong in 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 God and that you can ever be strong in 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 yourself rather i mean when when you really think about it when we come to a place when we come to a place in our lives that that we need him i'm going to tell you where we're, where we're going to uh where we're going to be wise at We're going to be wise in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This world will look at you like you're foolish, but I promise you to to become a fool in the the standard of the world is to be wise in your your Christian wall. God wants you to understand that. He wants you to live in the wisdom that he has for you. I, I will never forget reading where Solomon Solomon, one of the best decisions that he ever made, he told him, he said, I want wisdom. He asked God, he said, I want wisdom so that I can judge your people. And, and what he was talking about, so I can lead your people and help your people. And, and God blessed him for it. God blessed him for it, made him a wise, a wise man. And I'm going to tell you something. And that, that right there, I think, was the key to God using him just I'm talking about mightily in his lifetime. Why? Because he desired the wisdom that God had. You know, we, we can get out here. I can get out here and get a, I can, I can spend the biggest part of my adult life in school. I know people that have, have education running out their ears. I know one, I know one man that he is a, I'm talking about one of the smartest men I know. Got more education than most administrators of the school that he's a, he's a professor at, and but he he's just down to earth guy. He just like me. I mean, he just well, he's not like me. He's a lot smarter, book book smarter than I am. But uh, he he don't care to get dirty. He don't care to get out here and and do what he needs to do to to uh, make it through. But he ha- he is one wise man as far as the world and education is concerned. Now whether or not he's he, he's He's wise in the things of God. I really don't know. I don't know him that well. Known him for a lot of years, but we're not that close as far as uh, friends are concerned. So being wise in Christ Jesus will will take you places. Being wise as far as God's concerned will take you places. Like I said, that people will look at you like you're a fool when, when when you get in a place that 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 you that you have come to the conclusion and understanding that my goodness, I want to know everything there is to know about God and what He has done, what He wants me to do, and what He's willing to do in my life. You'll 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 be a fool in the world's eyes, but I promise you, I promise you, that's the that's the smartest place you'll ever you'll ever desire to be, and that is in Christ Jesus, in Him wise in him let me let me read that amplified classic again because this is this is a a very big eye opener the first corinthians three eighteen in the amplified classic says let no person deceive himself if anyone among you supposes that he is wise in this age let him become a fool let him discard his worldly discernment and recognize his, himself as dull and fu- foolish and stupid without learn without true learning and scholarship that he may, may become really wise. Listen, do away with all this worldly knowledge. D- uh, f- uh, permeate yourself, saturate your heart and your mind with God's word, because I promise you, the the things of God will lead you lead you far past. What the things of the world will lead you? I, I told my a buddy of mine. I feel like I need to go back and read it. It's been probably a couple of years now, but we were talking about delighting yourself in the Lord, and and we've talked about the, uh, Psalms thirty seven four. And I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna read it. It says uh, thirty seven Psalm thirty seven four. It says, "Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart." Well, I told Scott, I said, you know what? I said, I've done that. And I said, I said, 
But the thing that I have have uh, come to the conclusion about delighting myself in God and in and, and His Word and, and everything about His Word, I said, He has given me the desires of my heart. He has. But the thing I told him, the thing of it is, I said, the di- desires that I had years ago about my life, huh, they have changed so much in, in, in the last few years of my life. Why? Because when you delight yourself in him, when you delight yourself in what God says and what he is talking about in his word, your desires will change. He'll, cha- he'll change your desires, your priorities your priorities will change. Your priorities will come to a place in that, that you look around and think you don't even recognize your desires anymore. Because um, what my desire is today is to see everyone on this planet come to realize that they can be wise in Him, in Christ Jesus, in God's Word. And, and, and when they come to that conclusion, there'll be a change in their heart and in, in their mind. There'll be a change in, in what, what God is doing in their heart. You know, uh, years ago, I was a Christian. I, I wanted things to, 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 I wanted to be strong in a Christian life. But I, I didn't, I had a lot of the world in me that God had to get out. I delighted myself in Him, and over the years, He's washed all that out of me so that He can put the real desires of my heart in there, His desires. The desires to see millions saved, saved and born again, and millions, hundreds of millions changed, changed. Why? Because they decided to hear what God's word said instead of hearing what all the junk that this world has to offer. Listen to me today. Listen to me today. Be wise in him. Be wise in the truth that he has written down for you to live in to live by, and to stand in. And when you do that, when you do that, I promise you, it'll change the way you look at things. It'll change the way you live your life. Because I'm going to tell you something today. When you come to the realization that that the wisdom of God far surpasses the world we live in, it'll change the way you look at the world. It'll change the way you look at yourself. I'm going to tell you something today. God's word will change you and it will it will it will put a desire in your heart you thought you would never have. And that desire is to draw close to him, be wise in him, to be guided and directed in everything that you say and do, be dr- guided by his precious holy spirit that dwells in God's people. Make Jesus Christ the first and foremost thing in your life. Allow his Holy Spirit to guide you and, and learn who you are in him. Learn the, 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 that the desires of your heart will change over time when you delight yourself in him. When you delight yourself in him, you're delighting yourself in his word. His word will change you. I promise you it'll change you. Glory to God. Now listen, I do this every time I do a podcast. I want to give the world an opportunity. If, if I know there's there's a bunch of people that listen to this podcast on a daily basis that are born again. But I want to give the opportunity to the ones that are not born again to be born again. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you shall confess the Lord Jesus, confess the Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. God wants you to know that. He wants you to stand in that. He wants you to believe that. But you got to accept it. You've got to accept him as Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Confess him as Lord. You know, invite him in. There's millions that believe in God, but they've never invited him in to be Lord of their life. Invite him in today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. I promise you. He'll change your life like you've never seen it change before. He wants to change it. He wants to see you lifted up and strong. But he but the starting point of that is for you to be saved, to be born again. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. 
Now listen, go to our website. I want to encourage you. I've been talking about this this iPhone, this phone app for for a lot of weeks now. I want you to get this phone app. Go the go to the website and download this phone app and get this phone app and go back to June the twenty first of two thousand and twenty one and find out what God is saying to you for you and about you in His Word. If you'll do that. I promise you, he will change the way you look at life. He'll change the way you look at at, at the way you're the way you're living. But you got you got to you got to apply apply God's word to your heart. You've got to apply God's word to the to the to what He is wanting you to do, and that is He wants you to find out who you are. He wants you to find out who God says you are, not not who. Who not what the world says you are, but who what His Word says you are—a born again child of God. That's what that that uh, uh, app is for: is to teach you who you are. You can go back and listen to those podcasts. I'm talking about just I'm mean, over and over and over again. But I promise you, if, if they're there for a reason, they're there to help you and strengthen you. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. Get this phone out. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge all over this planet. Oh, I thank God for faithful partners that do just that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do so into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.